countless people disappear every year. While the majority of these people are found, many remain missing to this day, leaving behind unanswered questions for their friends and families. However, even cases where vanished people eventually reappear can leave investigators with more questions than answers. These are five cases of people who disappeared and reappeared out of thin air. Number 5 Not everyone who goes missing wants to be found. That certainly seems to be the case with Carlos Sanchez de Salazar, a Spanish doctor who went missing in 1996. Carlos was a 26-year-old and suffered from severe depression when he went missing from his home in Seville, Spain. His family feared the worst after they discovered the extent of his mental health problems and local authorities began a search of the area. However, no traces of Carlos were ever found and he'd taken his passport with him so he could have gone anywhere. His family continued to search for years but in 2010 he was legally declared dead. Nine years later, Two villagers were mushroom picking deep in the forest in Tuscany, Italy, where they discovered a trail of water carriers which led them to a hermit's camp. The two villagers were scared of the man, who apparently had a long beard and dirt-covered face, and fled from the forest but returned with the forest ranger a few hours later. By this point, the hermit was beginning to pack away his camp. Instead of being angry at being disturbed, he greeted the ranger. He told them he was Carlos and he'd been living in the forest since 1997. When asked for proof, he produced Carlos's passport, which one of the villagers managed to photograph. He told them that he wouldn't be there if they came again and said they didn't want to live with the rest of society. The mushroom pickers contacted a local missing persons charity, who traced Carlos's parents. When shown the photograph of his passport, Carlos's family insisted that this was their son. They flew to Tuscany and joined a search party to find Carlos again. However, he had already moved on, leaving behind only the tarp that he'd been using as a shelter and some water bottles. It would seem that Carlos didn't want to be around people again, something his family says that they respected, but his reappearance and disappearance still leave many questions as to how he ended up in Italy and why he would tell the ranger who he really was and where he is now. Number 4 In a sort of irony, Eddie Huff had taken his sister, Linda Ortega, hiking in the forest of the Arkansas Ozarks to teach her survival techniques when Linda went missing. The pair didn't live in the area, but had traveled to the St. Joe area to visit their sister. When Eddie returned to their sister's house, he was disoriented and alone, but he told his family he'd dropped off Linda at a relative's house. However, Linda wasn't there, and a search party set off in search of their 53-year-old. Linda was missing for five days before an all-terrain vehicle finally found her. She was mostly unharmed and had sustained cuts and bruises and also seemed to be confused about what had happened. One police officer told reporters that she wasn't at herself when she was found. She told rescuers that she believed Eddie had been injured and she'd become lost while trying to find help. Linda used the survival techniques her brother had taught her living on berries that she could find as well as a watercress, hazelnuts, and water from the creek. Investigators claimed that there was no foul play and believed some of the berries may have been poisonous causing Eddie and Linda to hallucinate and become confused. This may also explain stories that emerged after Linda's reappearance. One story claims that Linda saw other hikers while she was missing, but no matter how loud she called for help, they didn't seem to hear her. Other beings resembled shadow people who would hide in the bushes watching her. However, these apparently paranormal claims seem to have originated in a book called Missing 411 or a now lost article, which should now be taken with a grain of salt. Even so, it's hard to imagine how terrified Linda must have been lost and alone in the wilderness for five days and how relieved she was to be found. Number three. A common reason why people choose to disappear is to start a new life for themselves or to escape an old one. However, it's hard to imagine that was the case with Dr. William Bates. Bates was a wealthy man in an apparently happy marriage in 1902. He was a successful ophthalmologist at the height of his career, working at the Bellevue Hospital and the New York Eye Infirmary. He was extremely well respected in his field, having written many books and was sought after for his work. He was in the middle of writing a book when on August 30th, 1902, Bates was called away for work. He wrote a hurried note to his wife. Ada, who was away visiting her mother, telling her that he'd been called out of town for what he described as a major operation. There was no details about where he was traveling to, but he told her that he would write more with the details later. 
that second letter never came. Ada grew worried when a housekeeper told her Bates hadn't returned after several days. She contacted friends and family across the US and Europe, and even enlisted the help of the local Masonic Society as Bates himself was a prominent Mason. Six weeks later, she received a letter from a friend in London who had spotted Bates. He was very thin and had experienced periods of starvation and his eyes were deeply sunken. Bates had been admitted to the Charing Cross Hospital, but was now working as a medical assistant there. He had no memory of his previous life and when his wife arrived in London, he didn't recognize her. Bates reluctantly went with his wife to stay at the Savoy Hotel, where she hoped that he would remember about his old life. He told her that he had distant memories of traveling from New York to perform an operation, but nothing more. However, after just two days, Bates disappeared again. Ada would never see him again at this point. She spent the next five years searching Europe and the US for her husband, tracing a number of leads that supposedly led to Bates. In 1907, she passed away, allegedly holding a portrait of her husband. Bates had somehow made it back to America and was living in North Dakota when he was found by a friend in 1910. A colleague named Dr. J. E. Kelly found Bates in Grand Forks, where he'd started a small practice for himself. Bates still had no memories of his old life, and they would never be recovered, but he eventually returned to New York City with Kelly. He continued to work as a doctor until he passed away in 1931, taking the truth about his disappearances with him. Number 2 Canadian Edgar Latulip disappeared in 1986 and remained missing for nearly 30 years. Edgar was 21 years old but had developmental delays, which meant that mentally he was the age of a child when he went missing from his group home in 1986. The last time his mother, Lydia, saw him, her son was in a hospital recovering from a suicide attempt. This wasn't a one-off occurrence as Lydia later described him as a deeply troubled young man who moved between psychiatric wards, group homes, and hospitals throughout his teenage years. Edgar had been released from the hospital and returned to the group home before he disappeared but left his medication behind, causing great concern for authorities. Naturally, the worst was feared, especially when investigators found Edgar had taken a bus to Niagara Falls, a suicide hotspot. However, no body or trace of Edgar was ever found, and his mother believed something else must have happened to him. Throughout the years, Lydia worked with authorities to call for any information about her son. Age progression photos were included in later flyers, and Lydia spoke in interviews as late as 2014 about the stress of it all and how it made her ill. Still, she never gave up hope that she would get answers about Edgar's fate. In 2016, she was proven right when Edgar managed to find himself. Edgar had indeed traveled to the falls, but traveled on from there to St. Catharines where he hit his head and lost his memory. For 30 years, he lived in the Niagara Falls area under a new identity. Though not easy, he built a new life for himself, sometimes living homeless in the area and sometimes living with the support of local services. But in January of 2016, Edgar started to have flashbacks. For the first time in 30 years, he remembered something from his old life. Edgar remembered his old name and after a quick internet search, realized that he was a missing man. He contacted his social worker and informed local police. A voluntary DNA test was performed, confirming Edgar was the missing man and he was reunited with his mother. Number 1 The real story of what happened to student Stephen Kubaki in 1978 will likely never be resolved, partially because Stephen himself is happy to let that year of his life remain a mystery. Stephen was a 23-year-old history student at a small Christian university near the shores of Lake Michigan when he went missing without a trace. He'd previously studied in Europe where he climbed mountains and started a romance in Germany that continued after he returned to the US. He was a competent cross-country skier and was on one of his regular cross-country skiing trips when he went missing in February of 1978. He told his friends he would be gone for the day as he intended to ski around the shores of the frozen Lake Michigan. When he hadn't returned the following day, his family reported him missing and a large land and air search began. It wasn't long before the search party found footprints believed to belong to Stephen. They headed out towards the lake, coming to a stop where the ice-covered lake began. There were no cracks in the ice or any markings indicating that he'd ventured out onto the lake. It was as if he had disappeared into thin air. Two snowmobiles later found skis and a backpack abandoned in the snow. They quickly contacted authorities who connected the belongings to Stephen. However, no remains were found. 
Despite the lack of evidence, many assumed that he must have fallen beneath the ice and drowned. However, he was never declared dead, and not all investigators believed that this was the case. Dental records were sent to Chicago to see if Stephen may have been an unidentified victim of John Wayne Gacy. His parents also didn't believe that he was dead and spent thousands of dollars to hire a private investigator. Later, Stephen showed up on the doorstep of his aunt's house in Great Barrington. He explained that he'd woken up in a grassy knoll in Pittsfield, 700 miles from where he'd disappeared. Fourteen and a half months later, he had no memories from the time that he'd been absent and hadn't believed that much time had passed until he saw the date on a newspaper. His last memory before he woke up was feeling cold and lost in an icy darkness. What happened next, nobody knows. Stephen was wearing clothes he didn't recognize and a backpack filled with maps and hitchhiking signs. He also had new glasses, shoes, and a t-shirt from a marathon in Wisconsin. If these actually belonged to him, it indicated that he'd traveled a lot in his unplanned gap year. Many have linked the disappearance to the mysterious Michigan Triangle, which is claimed to be responsible for dozens of disappearances throughout the year. However, the truth will always remain unknown. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.